because he felt almost so far away from the golf ball in his <laughs> arms, he actually started to move them back towards the ball and he actually created a little bit of lag, yeah. uh, which is much more athletic as well. Now, if there's one position that amateurs obsess over more than anything, it's got to be that top of the swing, right? Yep. Especially from the face-on view that we have over here on the left-hand side. A lot of players see this within their own golf swing, this real breakdown structure of the lead arm, yep. right? We also see that coupled with the effect that there isn't much distance at all between the hands and the body there. Yep. Yep. So it's very narrow, T-Rex arms at the top of the swing. <laughs> doesn't really generate much speed or power relative to what we see with the general professional golfer, right? So we can see that this lead arm is quite structured and the distance between the hands and the shoulders is quite wide, okay? So it's a wide swing. Now, a lot of players would look at this and they'd go, oh, I just need to keep my left arm straight in the back swing. That's it, for the right-hander that is. Now, unfortunately, the effect of that is usually they try and keep it so stiff and so rigid in the wrong manner, they just pull it across their chest, then before they know it at the top of the swing, breaks down, right? So this gentleman over here on the left-hand side, talk to me about how he got himself into this position. Was this a misconception? Was this just a learnt, let's say, mechanic over a period of time? What do we have here? Perfect, so this is, uh, this is Will, and I think Will likes to hit the ball as far as he can, mm -hmm. okay? And I think Will's interpretation of hitting the ball as far as he can is, is the club has got to get to parallel at the top. Yeah. Okay. And sometimes he wouldn't even turn his body. Okay. So his way of getting the club to parallel at the top would solely to be breaking his arms because he can only get so far without body turn. And then something's going to give to get the club to parallel at the top. Right. So he probably, and that's a huge misconception in itself, is like finishing the swing, try and get the club shaft parallel to the ground. Now, a lot of the time players would see let's say professional golfers with a driver at full speed. And even then it's very rarely that the club gets to parallel position. Yep. Right? And we can see the average top of swing for a professional golfer once they've achieved this 90 degrees of shoulder rotation. Well, it's definitely nowhere near 90 degrees, is it? No. It's a complete different structure. So we can see that it's quite a distance between there and there. Whereas a lot of amateurs are obsessing about getting this golf club level with the ground because they think they need to complete their swing. But it's not necessary, right? We're looking for a big body turn and essentially a shorter arm swing. And this guy right here, it was all around a misconception that he needed to get the golf club level to the ground to try and generate as much speed and power. Yeah. Okay. So talk me through the adjustments that you made with this gentleman here. Perfect. So once we had the understanding that absolutely the body needed to make more of a fuller turn and the arms didn't need to uh, travel half as far, hmm. that was the very first thing. Once we could paint that picture for him, hmm. he really understood. The only other thing I'd add into that as well is how that affected his downswing. So once he got into that folded position, he had to refine the ball. So he then started to lengthen his arms again. And yeah, the second that. we saw impact, he had the shaft leaning way backwards. Ball flight was way high and the complete opposite of what we wanted. Just do that once more. So set up to the ball and I want you to get to the top of the swing where this amateur golfer was getting. So the club shaft, let's say level with the ground, bunched up here, sometimes didn't rotate his chest, sometimes did. And then from here, because his arms are so short, a lot of players, obviously it happens subconscious, still got to try and hit the golf ball at some stage. So what happens is they tend to try and get into this position that we see with the professional, which is down here, but we always find them getting to here. Now, the following effect from that is scoop. That's a huge exaggeration, right? That affects low point, your consistency of strike, distance, control over the golf ball, right? But the cause of all that issue really is a concept of how to move the golf club away in the backswing, which through a discussion with him, you thought or you found that he was trying to do it in an ineffective manner. So you gave him Absolutely. a great drill in the takeaway and a feeling of something to do with the right hand, which really Absolutely. set him on the right trend, didn't he? Absolutely. So I tend to see a lot of guys want to keep their left arm straight. Yeah. Now for me, I think some of the feedback we get from that is it feels quite robotic and it's not very comfortable. Correct. Okay. So one of the drills I gave him was to take his right hand, place it palm down on top of the golf club. Correct. Okay. So his trowel arm is actually the longest arm here. Okay. Okay. And then from there, he would need to make some back swings. Now, as he rotates back, because the trowel arm's so straight, oh, actually I can't get the club back there. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden he had to move his shoulders. He had mm -hmm. to move his hips. He had to coil while continually pushing the club away from him. Pushing. 
Absolutely. Then I'd have him grip it, check it. And now we can see that angle between his, uh, his left arm and the club is actually not as aggressive mm. um, as an angle. And same in the right arm as well, which you can see how much that changes the distance that the club travels. Yeah, so just swing back from address to the top of the swing for me. Good. So if the average professional golfer gets to this stage, we can see a distance between the hands and the shoulder. And we can also see a structure to this lead arm. Now, this amateur golfer and many others try and get the club shaft parallel to the ground. And we can see straight away this gets very narrow. That can result in this getting steep, unloading that shaft too early, and then all of a sudden you get the cast and scoop. Absolutely. Now, the best way to look at the golf swing is what elements can we change early on, be it a setup, and then take away to have the follow-on effect that's going to prove impact. And that's exactly what you did with this guy. Yep. From the address position, if you set up again, you got his right palm open on top. Now, how much tension? Is this locked out? Is this just long? How are you feeling that? Mm, I would actually say it's, it's, it's pretty long and pretty tense, a bit of both really. I would say I'm definitely right. having to stretch that right arm out to reach the base of the grip, yeah. Yeah, perfect. Now, as you go back, you're keeping contact of that palm on. Now, to get any sort of length to your swing, you actually have to allow your wrists to hinge, don't you? Yep. And we can see from the down the line view there that the hands are actually a lot more in front of the chest, which is what we see with the professional. Now, this gentleman by this stage, if you put your two hands together for me, he would generally be all the way up there already. Yep. So he's fast forward the arm motion, trying to complete the backswing, where essentially he should be here and then from there, to facilitate the rest of the swing, it's just a little rotation of the body, isn't it? Perfect. Absolutely. Now, there's a movement in the golf swing called a dynamic stretch. Yep. Now, a lot of the time, and I get this all the time in my coaching practices, that players will go, oh, it feels tight. I don't think I have the mobility to do that. And then that's where the conversation comes in. It's like your muscles have a stretch when they're used at speed. Okay. Yep. And if you're trying to do anything slow and structured, it is going to feel slightly uncomfortable, mainly because players are tense. They're not breathing, they're not relaxed. So when players are in this position, let's say their palms on top, just making sure that they're exhaling as they go back into this, allows the club to naturally hinge a lot more, right? And they'll feel that they've got way more room to move and pivot that chest as well. Absolutely. So once you've given him that position, he gets a better understanding of what width and structure is, what happened from there? So once you got a better understanding of what to do i mean in actual fact the most amazing thing happened we started to see rather than going from a narrow to wide position and we find it we almost right. saw the complete opposite we saw that once he got to the top with his stretch because he felt almost so far away from the golf ball <laughs> his arms he actually started to move them back towards the ball and he actually created a little bit of lag yeah uh, which is much more athletic as well yeah yeah so i'll just jump in there for me so when i'm standing next to the golf ball. So let's say that quick snatchy player trying to get this golf club shaft all the way to level with the ground, having a few rehearsals from the address position, chucking my palm so the pad of my right hand is sitting on top of the thumb, relaxing and exhaling as I swing back. I can see and I can feel that that's a lot more in front of my chest, right? Uh, from the face on view, we'll see a lot more body turn. So we're increasing our body turn, but we've got a relatively short arm swing relative to a small body turn, big arm swing. And then from there, even just starting to swing down, I feel like I have so much room and width. And often players analyze this position coming down, don't they? Yep. Now, common misconception in golf is that the roundness of the golf swing is created from pulling the arms. But what we see with the professional is the lead arm doesn't nearly move across the chest as much as what most players think. Every high level golfer starts in the address position with their hands in front of their chest. And at the moment of impact, within reason, they will get them back in front of the chest. So the more that we drag them around our body, it just creates this unnecessary compensation required to get them back in front, yeah. right? And when that happens, your body stalls out and we start to scoop because your brain's just trying to coordinate impact. That's all yeah. it's trying to do. So when we go through this motion, just starting off, setting up palm on top of thumb, small exhale swings back and through. That feels really good. And it's gonna feel short to players. Now, would you ever get them hitting a ball, just chipping one down there like that? 100%. Great, so 100%. let's give it a shot, let's give it a shot. Now, quite challenging the first couple of times that we get players <laughs> doing this. Let's see how we go. Let's see if a lifetime of golf pays off, right? <laughs> Slow, exhale. Good. And that just felt really wide, right? And just even getting contact there, there's just a huge difference in sensation of the distance of this handle away from my chest. This felt wide the entire time, essentially. 
the wider your golf swing, the more potential speed that you have to create in the downswing, which in association with a lot of speed work and everything that I've done with other coaches is we know that that's quite an important thing. Yeah. If you get to this very narrow and then wide golf swing motion that you were talking about before, that's not really a, a great recipe for success with either contact or speed. So starting off here with these small palm on top exercises and then building up, how many reps of those did you do before you got them hitting full shots? Tons, because <laughs> yeah. it is a hard drill as you probably just uh, just mm. realized. So actually this one took a little bit more time, mm -hmm. um, de definitely to find strike, mm. um, but we saw him shift in even better as well. So yeah, I would say we hit at least 20 to 30 uh, of those drills before we even got to a golf shot. Yeah, mate, incredible stuff. Great coaching. Good job.